friends welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat West Bengal India this is fecal emulsification of an advanced senile cataract in a myopic eye eye well power selected is 14.5 diopter I am expecting a bit of lens iris diaphragm retropulsion in this case the surgery is under topical anesthesia and patient is a senior ophthalmologist colleague of mine this is the main incision with a 2.8 millimeter steel keratome at around 110 degree axis. Watch the eyeball is being supported by a Johnson part. No forceps is being used. If we use forceps, there is chance of subconjunctival hemorrhage. But if we learn to use this cotton tipped junction bud to support the eye and do the incisions the chance of subconjunctival hemorrhage is eliminated by this time the eyeball has been filled up with a with an air bubble tripan blue dye has been applied underneath the air bubble now dye is washed out and then 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose is used to fill up the anterior chamber. And now I'm going to use a uterita forceps for capsular access. The capsule is incised, a tag is made, and the tag is guided anti clockwise remaining at a certain distance away from the margin of the dilated pupil and a nice round about 5 millimeter rexis is obtained now hydro dissection is done with BSS and a 27 gauge cannula the fluid wave goes to the opposite equator the nucleus is depressed and the nucleus is rotated and now some more visco is injected and then the tip of the feco needle goes into the anterior chamber bevelled down some superficial cortical lens matter is removed and this is how the LITRS is managed just lift the iris with the blunt chopper and the uh, lens iris re diaphragm retropulsion is managed. LIDRS is because of reverse pupillary block in particularly it happens in myopic eyes because of irrigating fluid the iris gets into firm opposition with the capsule and both the iris and lens move towards the vitreous cavity and this can be managed just by lifting the iris you can see that the cataract is not very soft nucleus sclerosis is about in grade 4 you can see the brown tinge of the nucleus and there is some leathery posterior fibers which is preventing full crack this is the other hemineucleus and now my plan in this case is to reduce the vacuum for the last nuclear piece till now the vacuum is 450 flow rate is 45 and from this point from this point the vacuum is reduced to 250 flow rate 25 and the ultrasonic energy remains same about 60 percent and the last piece is safely emulsified and the 
chance of catching the posterior capsule is reduced to a great extent by decreasing the vacuum and flow rate. Cortical cleanup can be done in many ways. We can use coaxial irrigation aspiration. For bimanual, we need one more side port. In this case, I have made only one side port. When we have only one side port, this instrument works very well. This is a 23G direct Simco cannula. And see how beautifully the cortex has been cleaned. There's a speck of cortex sticking to the posterior capsule and using only the irrigating proof to dislodge that cortex. Because of some reason, a lot of small air bubbles have formed and they are sticking to the corneal endothelium. But this is not of much problem. We can easily remove it by irrigation and aspiration. This is a hydrophobic acrylic single piece monofocal aspheric intraocular lens from Johnson and Johnson. This is Technis 1. No financial interest, but this is a very nice lens. No glistening over the ears, but this is a bulky lens. So we should use a big cartridge so that the lens is not compressed too much. And now this is removal of the viscoelastic substance. I'm using first this instrument. This is the same 23G Simco that was used for removal of cortex. And after this, I will use the bimanual irrigation aspiration. I go behind the IOL, irrigate the capsular bag, and polish the posterior capsule if necessary, even after implanting the intraocular lens. You can see that the optic of the intraocular lens has been nicely covered all around by the rexis. So this is an ideal rexis, and this is ideal centration of the intraocular lens. This is the irrigating proof. I go behind the eye well and irrigate the capsular bag so that all the visco from the capsular bag comes out. This is use of irrigation from the main incision and aspiration from the side port. When we use irrigation from the main incision, the anterior lip of the main wound is slightly lifted up so that irrigation of fluid becomes so that egress of fluid becomes less through the main wound. And this is closure of the side port. The main wound has been constructed in such a way that it will not require any hydration. There is a bit of chemosis, but this is not much, so we need not drain the fluid that is there in the supranasal quadrant. And this is the final lavage with BSS. The anterior chamber is nicely formed, very nicely formed. And then the integrity of all the wounds are checked. There should not be any leakage from any side. Then few drops of moxie is applied over the ocular surface and then the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Whenever we are operating on a uh, very important person, either close relatives or senior colleagues or any influential person, we must remain calm and composed. We may reduce the speed of our surgery to some extent to keep our mind at ease. In this case, we have learned how to control 
Eli Dieris, the lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome. Just lift the iris with a blunt chopper or any instrument, any blunt instrument, and the lens iris diaphragm becomes at its normal position. 